Good morning everybody, staying here from Rocky Creek. So I'm here today actually with an unboxing video. Now this isn't something that I do very often. Uh, those of you that have been with us from the very beginning, uh, you know that um, I have done a few things, some of which I bought on my own. But then there's some times where companies will reach out wanting me to try out their products. And to be real honest with you, I turn a lot of those down. Mostly because either A, I don't have enough time to make sure that I get their stuff done the way that they want it properly with working plus trying to manage everything else and most times I just don't have the time to do it and I'm not going to waste their time and they're not going to want to wait on me so I defer them to other people. Now there are a few times where the item is very applicable and I've looked into the company and I feel pretty comfortable about it and during dialogue I felt like we could probably come to an understanding and that it could be a benefit to both of us. And so a lot of you know that Renacoop is really the first company I've done a lot of that with. But today I'm here with a company called Endurance Lights. And Endurance Light reached out to me probably about a month ago and wanted to know if I wanted to try out one of their solar wireless spotlights or street lamps. And I kind of let it sit there for a little bit because I wasn't really sure. But then I started thinking after we had a lot of our issues with our pigs, with Big Mama getting sick, the birthing of the pigs, some of that stuff, I had to do some things as it got dark. And typically when I need to do anything, I use this headlamp right here that I bought from a local store from a brand named Nebo. And it works really well, but it's an LED headlamp. And the problem with that is although it lasts very long and it's rechargeable, that when it goes out, it's out. Like there's not very much heads up about it. And having an alternative light source for when I need to do stuff at night or super early in the morning could be a tremendous help to me here. Two big things I want more on this property is better access to water and better access to light or electricity in the areas that I'm at. Running electricity is very expensive, so a wireless, solar, and even remote controlled light for our pig area could be a huge help. So I've opened up the big box here but then inside of it there's two small boxes and i have not opened this up at all so let's take a peek and see what we got because not only did they send me one light but when they asked for the dimensions of my pig area they actually recommended two lights to properly illuminate it and so they did they sent me two of them so i'm here to share them with you and let you know how this works out and maybe if you're on a farm or a rural area or maybe just don't have the money to run electrical to run an electric light this may be a very good option so let's see what's inside there's two boxes very similar to this. You can see LED solar street light and right there is the company endurance lights right there. So let's pop this open and let's see what's inside. So they got it wrapped up in a pretty good heavy duty bubble wrap so it should protect it very good. Quick and easy instructions and troubleshooting. Looks like mounting hardware with remote. And then the light in and of itself is I like the slim design of it and the integrated solar panel. There were some lights that I've looked at in the past that had a separate solar panel that you had to mount. Um, so I like that this one had it integrated. And then you can see your bright LED lights. Um, this is a sensor, I believe for motion detection and then your on off switch from right there. Second box should be the exact same as the one prior. So we'll open that up here in a minute. But then I saw something else in the box too. There's two of these, which I believe are gonna be our mounting poles uh, because they list different options of which you can mount these. Um, you can do them wall mounted. You can do them pole mounted. It's really up to you. I wasn't fully sure what all was gonna come in here. So I'm, I haven't 100% decided how I'm gonna mount this. But once I get these pulled out and I kind of look at it, we're going to go from there and we'll get them installed. So it looks like you got two different ways of mounting. These look like maybe some anchors. And then these are some kind of clamping bolts. And so, yes, it came with a pole that mounts it and it looks like it'll give it a vertical rise just slightly. So you can either direct mount here into a wall or it can clamp like so and mount it that way which i think the way that we're going to do it maybe clamp it but the pole's lightweight has kind of a textured finish i wonder if it may be powder coated which if it is that would be great i don't know 100 percent sure if that is powder coating but if so that should help a lot 
and the longevity of the metal but it feels like a, a, a aluminum if I were to guess which that'll be good lightweight and strong so yeah we got two lights two mounting poles so let's go over here to the pig area and figure out the best way of which we want to mount these and let's get them up and let's put them to the test so after messing with the bracket and doing some brainstorming I think what I'm gonna do is I got a couple two by fours that I have on hand and I want to try to space both these lights out to where it's going to give me the most coverage. In the area where we had the shelter burned down, we're going to be moving the piglets into there pretty soon because the grass is growing up really high. So in the big shelter we have for Big Mama is going to go and be a little wooden shelter. So I think I'm going to mount these two by fours to the wooden post on the exterior with some long screws. And I'll end up putting some brackets too to strengthen it up. And then we're going to mount the light up towards the upper part of the two by four from there so we can get a good bit of height and to get maximum coverage of our lighting so let's get these mounted then we'll start hooking the lights on well y'all stop pestering your mama get off her back we're trying to get y'all some light So we got that board mounted that should cast light on Mater and Olivia and down through here and maybe hopefully even get a little bit more over in the pin next to it and then we have this one here which should cast this building's going to get moved back to there and that big shelter there's that was just temporary we're going to be having a smaller wooden one about the size of this right there so hopefully this will cast in the area of both of the houses I'm trying to focus the light on the actual housing areas because if I were to have an issue that I need to deal with the pigs in, the more likelihood is that they're going to be near their housing area. So that's why I'm trying to focus my area of light into that and anything extra we get will be great. So we'll see how the brightness plays out. But boards are mounted. Let's go get these brackets, see if we can get them mounted up and then we'll get the lights mounted. So for our mounting, we're going to use this hardware right here. And essentially the plan is, is that this is going to clamp on the two by four like so with it tightening up between these four holes now i will say that this is slightly smaller than the two by four two by four catches there so my my thoughts and my hopes is that as i tighten the bolts it's going to squish it but then what i plan to personally do to be on the safe side is on this back big hole here is i'm going to run some kind of a bolt or something with a washer as a secondary measure into the two by four just to give it some extra stability to keep it from sliding up and down so that's just something i'm going to do and i'll pick that up after the fact but this should give enough pressure and tightness that it should hold it no problem so let's get it up there so my plan is to put the bolts on very loosely to start out with just so i don't have to worry about i don't run the risk of dropping anything and then i'll tighten them down further and i have a feeling i'm going to have a lot of excess bolt and i may or may not come back and cut that off some depending on how it looks but we'll make that decision later on so you can see i've got the bolts on and i've ran it very loose and i'm hoping that i'll be able to slide this right over the two by four and it'll make it a little bit easier and then i'll tighten it from there So I ran into a little issue with the second bracket that I was getting ready to install. Um, I just opened it up and when I dropped out the hardware, somehow I ended up with two of the anchor style hardwares versus the bolts. So I gotta head to my building and see if I may have a couple bolts that may work. So hopefully we'll do. So hope the light works out well because I got a little packaging issue. So I didn't have any bolts that would have been long enough but I was able to find this scrap piece of wood I had from when I built our rabbit hutch. And I was able to find me some screws and washers 
So I'm just gonna attach this to the top of the two by four with a couple wood screws. And then we're gonna direct mount this onto the board like so with um, these four screws and washers that I do have on hand. So we're gonna make it work and we'll see how it goes. There you go, all mounted up. And honestly, I think that's a better way of mounting it than those bolts were. So now let's just get the bolts into the light and we'll get them slid on and clamped down. All right, so similar to what I did with the um, lamp in terms of doing the anchors halfway done, I'm gonna put these on loose and then we'll tighten it down once we get it on the actual pole. Uh, but inside of the hardware package with the actual light, you get this piece which is what we'll bolt to right here so it can slide onto the existing pole that we've already mounted, the bolts associated with it, and also the remote. Uh, batteries not included, takes three AAA batteries, so we have some of those, so we'll stick those in when it comes time. But right now, we'll get these bolts uh, ran through here and get it just, just very lightly on, just enough to where it's secured. And really that's just so I don't lose any hardware in the process. At least they give me washers for this part of it. So I'm trying to leave them loose enough to where the bolt is still able to sit inside of the pre-cut area so i don't have to i can only use one wrench to tighten it up so this one's good to go now all right let's go come on the pole There we go, now it's mounted on. We're gonna hit the on button and we're gonna let it start charging and then we'll come back to it. Well guys, there it is. It's all installed. That's the one for Mater and Olivia's pin. And I'll take you over here in a minute and show you the one that's on the other pin. Overall, my opinion of it was that the installation was pretty easy if you got the right uh, mounting hardware for it. So the first one, that bracket didn't exactly fit on the two by four, but it still clamped it tight enough that it worked out fine. And for this particular pin, it actually kind of helped because it kind of angled it to an angle that would have worked better for me anyways. But I think the way that we mounted the other one by putting a piece of wood at the top and direct screwing that in was a whole lot easier and probably better overall. My initial thought was that I was gonna mount it to some various trees and cut some limbs away. But then I decided against that for right now because I wanted to see how it worked and then I would kind of go from there if I need to move them around. Now the actual hooking the light onto it, that was super easy, just tightening the four bolts, no problem. Um, we did have that issue where they didn't send me the proper hardware for one of them. You're supposed to get, as I showed you, a set for an anchor set plus a bolt set and somehow I ended up with two anchor sets in one of them, but I was able to find my own stuff and make it work. So now it says to let these things charge for six to eight hours before initial use. So they should get, it's pretty early in the morning right now. It's already really hot though. 
So by this evening, it should be good to go. We'll give it a test during daytime, and then we'll also do a test once it is dark to see how bright they are and how much area that they're covering. This one here is up higher than the other one, so I would expect a larger coverage from this one. But if it does work, despite the little issue with the hardware, this is a way to provide some extra lighting in an area with no electricity run, easy to operate using a remote if all of it goes well in the test this afternoon. So let's let it get dark, let's let these charge up and we'll bring you right back and see how well it works. All right guys, so it's actually two days later after I did the install and it's just now starting to get dark, but I had to wait two days to bring you all along to show you how they turned out because literally probably a few hours after I put them in, we had a huge storm come in. High winds, knocked our power out for about 10 hours. And I mean, it was, it was just a big thunderstorm. Well, then the very next day, we had almost three inches of continuous hard rainfall. Flooded out our road, it flooded out my garden, which that's a whole nother conversation for another video. Uh, but anyways, here we are. But the good thing is, is that that night that I initially installed it, I actually very much liked what I saw from the lights. If they end up holding up long term, they may be a very great addition. I didn't record at that time though because I just, we didn't have any power and I was trying to conserve what all energy I had in my cameras and phones and whatnot. So I didn't want to mess with that, but we're actually, I'm going to consider this to be an ultimate test because if those lights kick on once it's dark here in just a little bit, probably in about another 30 minutes or so, it's been pretty much an overcast or cloudy condition for the last about 48 hours. And so if these have enough juice to kick on, then I'll be very impressed. But while we have that little bit of time, let me share with you a little bit about what I noticed feature wise and a little bit about the remotes that came with them. So guys, these lights have a couple different features on them. You can either do a constant on or you can do a motion detection and the motion detection is what I have it set up for currently and what I think I'm gonna leave it on all the time. Now on their remote, what they consider to be motion detection is what says right here that says induction. And then their always on is right here is always. Now what I'm doing is like I said, I'm doing the induction or motion, but then it has these other three features here, 2H, 4H, and 6H. Now it's my understanding that the 2H, 4H, and 6H is for if you want to run it on motion or even have it off, but then for whatever reason you decide, hey, I need this thing constantly on for a certain period of time, so you can just hit like the 2H and that'll give you two hours of continuous run at 100% power. I don't know of too many situations where I'm going to need that unless I have a major project I'm trying to work in here or a major incident. So what I've been using is the motion and what I like about it is it's only running on very small amount of power. It's just really like a soft LED light that I can see what's out here, but it's not overpowering towards bothering the pigs when they're sleeping. I'd have to look at their paperwork, but I'd say it's probably around 20 to 30% power. And then once I would walk up to the pen and get really close, it senses my motion and it kicks on 100% power. And it'll stay at that until it no longer detects motion. And then after about 30 seconds later or so, it'll go back to being dim, which I hope to be able to show you that here shortly if these things have enough juice to kick on today. But thus far, that has been the coolest feature to me. I like that low light kicked in with the high light, and then it ends up working out for just that period of time that I'm here. And I don't really have to, to do a whole lot. To me, it's more like a set it and forget it kind of setting. Let me give this just a little bit more time. Hopefully this will kick on and I'll show you how it lights up this pin and also the other pin. The one for Mater and Olivia's pin, I think it's a perfect location. The other one, depending on how things work out once we get Olivia's pin, it might get adjusted. But if durability wise, these things hold up for a good bit, I really can see me adding a few more of these to our homestead and they could probably be a very good help to you. So let me show you once they kick on, hopefully if they got enough power still. All right guys, so where I'm standing at is about right at 40 feet from the actual light. And I would estimate, you can see the light rays kind of end about right there, which would be about the 32 foot mark. And the width of their pin is 16 feet. 
So I think around 30 feet on each direction is a pretty good safe number for coverage wise. And it's set up as uh, motion detection. So as I walk towards it, it should brighten up. So let's give it a try. What are you doing, May May? It's just me, Bubba. Oh, so it picked up my motion detection. It was a little delayed. The other day I came out, it was kicking on pretty quick. I'm not sure if it's because of the mixture of light, but it's kicked on big time. But you can hopefully see, I'm not sure how well the camera picks it up. The amount of light is pretty good. So it's dropped back down a little bit. But with this remote, if I wanted it to stay bright like that and not go in and out, I could push the two hour button and now I can go full power for at least two hours. Um, and then if I needed longer, of course you got your four hour and your six hour, or you could just go always, which would be unlimited, 100% light. And if you notice it flickers and that's your way of signal of knowing that your, your remote has picked up towards the light. Uh, now let's go over to the other pin and I'll show you that real quick, but this will be a huge help, especially if my headlamp isn't working out. I'm going to flip it back over to motion though because I prefer it that way and I like that low light option that it gives me. See to me, this low light is like the perfect amount of light. It still allows it to stay dark in their shelter, but when I walk over here, I can easily see what I need to see if I just need to be able to see like to go in their pen to get their water, maybe to get a feed dish early morning for feeding. So to me, this low light option is actually a much better than the high powered and then the light will also last a lot longer. But let's go over to that other pin and show you. So it's much darker now. And over here, it's already on and that's on its sort of low light mode right now. And let me see if I can give you a good look at how much, it really illuminates this house a lot because it's right up at the fence. But this pin is about 32 foot square and you may not be able to see the, oh, see it just picked up my motion and it went ahead and got really bright. And when this goes full brightness, it'll pick up, you probably can't see it on camera, but I can actually see the back fence panels right there. And so this one is actually, I think, in a perfect spot. Gives me great illumination of it, but my hopes is, is that it's close enough to this pin here that it will end up picking up Big Mama's pin where her smaller house will end up being put at at some point. And I can kind of get both of them with this one light. So guys, this is actually illuminating me from the light right over here, and I'm probably about 10 feet or so into the pin. But that, so far, these have actually worked out really well. The motion sensor does not seem as sensitive today as it was the first night. Every time I came out here, when I'd say I got probably about 10 to 15 feet from the actual light from any direction, it seemed like it was picking me up. Tonight, it's not reacting near as much, but that's okay. As long as it's cutting on like it's supposed to in low light condition, which I really like that, that lower voltage and only going bright when I want it, I think this will work out perfectly well for us. Um, my overall assessment of the light as of right now, because I don't know the long-term durability of it, is you know if I were to give it like a one out of 10, I would give it probably an eight out of 10 is the best I could do right now. The only reason for a little bit of the, the deduction of points per se, would be that we had the issue with the hardware and I wasn't that impressed with the hardware. They sent us two of the same mounting kits versus what I needed for the second light. And the actual, the pole that goes to the light is pretty good. The actual bracket though that you mount it with that clamps together, I wasn't that impressed with that bracket. And then the other thing was is that the instructions really aren't the best formulated instructions. There's really nothing to tell you about install, which is not very difficult to do, but some people aren't as savvy and may struggle. So they probably need to improve their directions a little bit. And then the only other thing in terms of functionality of when we have actually put it up is the only negative is gonna be that for on today in particular, that motion sensor doesn't seem to be picking up as, as often and as regularly as what it was the other day. Now that could just be something to do with the weather conditions we've had over these last two days, kind of messing with it. And we're kind of right here in this transitional from day to nighttime mode. So it may be a little bit off right now versus when it's fully dark, but that's to be determined. But I still give it an eight out of 10. And now I think the only big question is gonna be the durability. The brightness of it, fantastic. The being that it's wireless, 
fantastic. So you can plug and play this thing anywhere and having the remote to be able to just point and shoot seems to work out fantastic. So I actually do think this light has a lot of features to it that are very beneficial. I actually could see us putting one of these on the other side of our home where it's very dark and also down near our chicken area in the future if they hold up. My opinion is I wanna see if these hold up for at least about two months. It's already been battle tested in the storm, worked out great. Hard rains has still worked out great. So I personally would plan to buy one of these once I make sure that I get a good 30 to 60 days of continuous operation without any major issues. So guys, I appreciate y'all coming along. If you need a wire-free, quick and easy, bright light to light up an area of your home, your property, your farm, or whatever it may be, this may be a very good option. You can go over there and check out endurancelights.com, see what you think of theirs. They have not paid me at all. I've told them I would be fully honest in this review and hopefully I've done so but I do thank them for this opportunity to share this with you. And this will be a huge help here on our homestead and probably other portions of our homestead in the future. But until we meet again, I hope everybody's had a great week and I look forward to being back with you all very soon. So guys, y'all take care, be good, and we'll see you here very soon on one of our next episodes. Thanks guys.